Thank you, Chrissy. That was, uh, I, I, can, I know I got a few pages out of that and I couldn't even see what you were doing up here. So I look forward to the videos. Um, now, the next topic is going to be Jesse coming up and talking about scoliosis. Okay, it's, it's um, obviously scoliosis is something that comes up at like, I think every advanced seminar I've been to in the last five years, somebody has brought up the idea of scoliosis. So before I bring Jesse up, I'm actually going to bring Allie up because she has a special relationship with scoliosis. So uh, here, Allison Tamucci. Thanks, Rich. So for, for those of you that don't know it, um, I feel like this is an AA meeting and I'm going to tell you that I was diagnosed with scoliosis when I was 13. And at the age of 14, I made the decision to have the surgery to get a Harrington rod. So I did that. Um, and the truth of it was I was thrilled because I felt like I was such a lucky person to live at a time when we could fix these terrible things of scoliosis, you know. So it was a big adventure to me. I thought I wanted to go to medical school at the time. And so it was, it was actually um, the initial phase of it was, was, even though it was very painful after the surgery, it was fun because I got to live in a hospital for a month and it was just, it was amazing. So, um, but I met a lot of other people who didn't really embrace it that way and were struggling terribly with this thing. It actually took me out of commission in a sense. I stayed home for the full year because I ended up having a spondylolisthesis and um, additional fusion um, in the lower lumbar. And so they, um, the, the body cast that I wore for nine months went down to one knee for six of those months. So I wasn't really able to sit properly. Um, but I still did a lot of things. I went sledding, I took showers, I put bags over my body, and you know, and my parents really encouraged me to just be a sport, and I was, you know, I, I just took it in my stride. Um, but I was aware that it wasn't so good for other people, and I met a bunch of them after I had my surgery. Um, one other note is I really wanted to, to observe the surgery and talk to the, my doctors about it, and they discouraged me and said, you really, it's not a good idea. It could be very traumatic to see what is done. And I've, you know, I have the, whatever they call that prospectus they do for um, orthopedic surgeries to see what, you know, in a picture what's done. Um, and I decided to, to take their advice and I never saw it. Um, but so what's happened over the years is as I had problems, um, I would seek out the help, mostly chiropractors, a few other people who did forms of manipulation and massage. And so I've, I'm sure I'm considered a medical success story because I, I have no serious problems now. Um, but occasionally, well, right before I met Jesse, I did seek out consultation with an orthopedic surgeon who I didn't know. I just looked somebody up um, and went to them and said, could I have this thing removed? It's a, it's a 10 inch long um, stainless steel rod. It's about the thickness of a pencil, goes from what is it, Jesse? T T6 to L3? T3 to L... Yeah, T6 to L3. T6 to L3. Um, and he's, this third surgeon said you could. There's no medical necessity for it, so you just have to pay for it, but we would do it. So I asked Jesse after we'd been together for a while, you know, is this something that would be a good idea for me? And his response after, well, I'm sure you knew that right from the beginning. He said, Right now we have a little can of worms. If you have that sur surgery to remove the rod, we could have a very big can of worms because of all the scar tissue and the changes that have taken place in your body. So that's all just to say that scoliosis has always been um, very important to me, um, even though it confuses me sometimes, the explanations of it and the causes of it and the fact that most um, scoliosis is idiopathic. Is that right, Jesse? That they don't really know the cause? Mm -hmm. So once in a while, I'm lying in bed at night and I can't sleep and I'll do a little research and I'll start poking around the internet to see who else has had the surgery and how they're doing and that sort of thing. And it's, it's not a happy story. There's a lot of people out there and I'm sure you guys see them in your offices. Um, and I came across one particular article that just shocked me. Um, and this is a, a Journal of the American Medical Association article by a, a Dr. Stuart Weinstein um, from the University of Iowa in 2003. Um, the title of his article was Treating Scoliosis in Young Unneeded. And the conclusion <coughs> um, was that 40% of operated, treated patients with idiopathic scoliosis were legally defined 
as severely handicapped 16.7 years after the surgery. And, um, and, then I've, and then I've read the accounts of the people who get on chat groups or you know, they talk to each other about how they're dealing with the pain and the disability that they have. And it, it, it's very disturbing to me, as you can imagine. So, and of course, it's the greatest irony of my life that I would meet you know, the person who could have helped me more than anyone else in the world, but he hadn't even figured this out yet. You know, that was 1975. So, um, so Jesse has had occasion, as I know many of you had, to treat people with scoliosis very successfully, and so I'm very interested in, in um, helping bring that to light and get more people more actively talking about ABC and scoliosis. So I asked Jesse if he would talk about it this year and sort of get that ball rolling. So with that, here's Jesse. Yeah. All right, well, the first thing is that scoliosis is really nothing special, all right? It's just the body compensating for bones out of place in a direction the body can't self-correct, and it goes wild. And um, there's basically two types of scoliosis. There's a scoliosis that is compensating for something out of place that the body can't self-correct, and it's a shallow thing where you have, like, I, I talked about um, I'll go on a trip and get on a plane or something like that and something will go cockeyed and you know Pierre would happen to drive in from Ithaca or somebody else would be treating me and um, I would have just gotten back from some trip and and Pierre would be going down my spine and he, he treated me a bunch because he was out there a bunch and he'd be going down the middle of my spine and all of a sudden, he'd push on something, and I'd say, are you on my spine? And he'd go, well, yeah. You know, and he'd, he'd start, and he was like, my spinuses were over on my right scapula. And he's like, where the heck did this big curve come from? It's like, how can you have this big of a curve? And the answer is, you know, something went cockeyed down here, and my body just went like this to compensate. And so it's got a big curve right now, and he'd treat it. And he'd stand there at the end, running his finger down my spine. He's like, that's amazing. How can that change so fast? And so you, you have people that come into your office, and you, know, you take x-rays or you take pictures, and they have this scoliosis. And you treat them, and it disappears like that. So this is, you, know, you can think of it as a shallow. It's a compensating thing, and it's fairly shallow. right? <coughs> and then you can have deeper ones. So. Um, this is the page from my website. You should all, if, if you haven't been on the, you know, this, this page has been on just about every website iteration I've had since uh, 2003 or one or two or something like that. And um, what you have here is um, you have the sitting and standing films and um, you could see this one is a little bit different than that one sitting to standing, or, or excuse me, standing to standing, but these are two different ones. But if you look at this is sitting, and this is the same person standing, all right? And so as her pelvis comes forward and she compensates less, this, this part of the curve gets bigger, okay, as does this one. But look at what happens down here. It changes. You know, it's more straight down here. It's more angled, but it's more straight down here, and it gets bigger up there. And you can correlate that with what happens over here. Now, um, oh, Jeff, I didn't notice that. These are the standings, and those are the sittings. These should be down here opposite those, but it doesn't really matter that much. But you can also see same thing. So if you look here, so this is a normal type curve, right? And this goes to the left. But this is a less normal type curve. And this is more over to the right. These are all the same people. Yeah, all the same people. This is October 95. This is February 96. This is standing. This is sitting. All right? Same thing here. These are the other ones, except these are sitting and these are standing. All right? All the... 
The ones to the left here are the same person, two different positions. The one to the left here are the same person, two different positions. All right? And the reason I, I put this one up is, is this is the basic anatomy of lots of scolioses. All right? So you, you can actually tell this person's a right, a um, little x-ray analysis thing, because this picture, all right, standing, side view, is actually the same as this picture, which is a front side view. You know, if, if it's a three-dimensional thing, it's the same picture, right? You're looking at it from the side and from the front, but it's the same picture. Actually, a little bit different because here her arms are up like this and here her arms are down, but essentially the same picture from a mechanical standpoint. So this curve looks pretty normal. And so the standing here is going to be the relative normal. This curve is not quite reversed, but almost. So this part of the spine, which is, correlates it's the same thing, this part of the spine is worse than this part. So over here it goes pretty far to the left, and over here it goes less to the left, it's more to the right at the bottom. So if you're looking for a breakdown side, you can say, okay, she's a right. Now, if you've, if you've done the x-ray seminar, you're sitting there going, yeah, you explain that in the x-ray seminar, it's no big deal. And, and you know, you, you could look at a, a, an AP and a lateral, standing, sitting, sideways, upside down, whatever it is, and you, you, you take one part of the spine, and if it's worse on the lateral, it's worse on the AP, and so you can tell the breakdown side just from that. How many people are confused by that? All right. So standing is the best compensation you could do, and sitting is less compensated. Right. So hang on. So which way does the spine go at the bottom? Because see, from this picture, you know, this looks more normal, and this looks less normal, right? The lumbar curve. Right. So over here, now this is sitting, and that's sitting up there. This is standing, and that's standing down here. So this one is more compensated. This one is less compensated. Which way does the lower spine go when the body decompensates? Yeah. You sit down, you decompensate. You're not compensated as well. So which way does, which way does the spine go? So this goes more to the right than it is up here. See, here it's more to the left. So you know she's a right. No, that's where you lost me. So how do I, so that happens then? Is that? Well, happens? does she get worse when she sits down over there? Right, but I Hang on. No. Just, yes. does she, well then she must get worse when she's over here. It's the same goddamn picture. Oop, pardon my language. She's worse. And that's, okay. So, that's, that's so she, she's, yeah. So, so you know she's worse. Yeah. And when she's worse, the spine goes to the right. Okay. You know, A equals B equals C. So, so she's worse over there, so she must be worse over here. And so she goes to the right, so she must be a right breakdown. Can you tell me if she goes to the right? If you look, if you look up here, See how this is angled to the left except for L5? See how this angles to the left? And then over here, just from this part lower, compared to up there, it goes right. Now, it never makes it to the right, but it goes toward the right. Can you see that? All right, so, so up here, it's angled like this. And down here, it's angled less. So it goes toward the right. The lower one's sitting. You can see this is sitting because you can see the thighs over here, and this is vertical, All right? So, you know, and, and this, is, this is why you should get the x-ray seminar and look at it. By the time you're done with the x-ray seminar, you're like, oh, this is no big deal, All right? Who, who's, who's done the x-ray seminar? Um, Rich, Rich did it. Ah, well, there you go. But, you know, so Rich is sitting here going, yeah, I'm all right, so this is pretty obvious. Okay, because, you know, with the x-ray seminar, I lead you through it more slowly, and I give you more details and things like that. But... Yeah. 
Yeah. And you say she, to the right is really to her left. Is that correct? Yes. So what you're saying is to the right, that's where I'm getting lost. Well, yeah, but I turn the, I turn the films around. See, oh, see where it says right here? Oh, they're backwards. Okay. You know, I, I, I take the picture like this, but when I hang them up, I look from behind. All right, sure. All right. Med medically, they tend to look at it the other way. Right. Chiropractors turn it, you're looking at the person from the back. Right, so, but, but you can see, here's the marker. It says right here, right up on top there, it says right. So her body goes to the right, and you, you can see the heart is on the left side. Um, so you can tell that, and then, you know, she gets treated, and as this changes, look, look at how much straighter this is on an angle. Now, th this is not straighter than this is, because you see this curve here. But this is now going to the right. So why is this going to the right? What? Say that again. Then you're standing. Well, then that, 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 that's true, but that's not why. Why is she going to the right there? What? Less compensation. Less compensation. Why is there less compensation? She's more stable. So her body, right, because when you're unwinding, you know, the bone goes out of place and you twist it to compensate. As you get more stable, you go toward the injury position. So this can go toward the right up here because she's more stable, so she can go toward the breakdown. And eventually this whole thing goes over and, and, and becomes like a big C curve. Now, she's got a bunch of little curves in here where it looks fairly straight. If you measure the vertebrae, each vertebra goes a little bit like this. And so in that section, she's actually got about four curves or five curves, and they're, they're curves with a twist, all right? And that'll unwind out, so it'll, it'll go back and forth a bunch of times. But eventually, this will become pretty much a, um, a C curve to this side, and then it'll straighten out, all right? Um, she actually has uh, up in here a little bit of a compression. It's, you have to look at it a little bit closer. So it, it's never going to straighten out 100%, but it'll straighten out almost, almost completely. But the, the key thing about this, the key thing about this, and this, this, is, this is what's a really big deal, is that whoops. Uh, the key thing about this is when you look down here, all right? So this is L5, and this is L4 and above, okay? This is the, the AP standing view, and this is the AP sitting view, okay? And what you see here, what you see here is L5 goes to the right, okay? Now, now it's actually to the left, but it's to the right compared to L4. You see that? Yeah. All right, so the, bo the bottom one, the bottom piece down here is a little bit like that. The next vertebra is like this, and then the whole spine takes off to the left, all right? So what you have here is L5 is anterior and to the right, and the entire, everything that happens above that's a compensation. Tilted, tilted, it's tilted to the right, okay? So, so compared to this one, which is tilted like this, all right, so if we, if we go like this, compared to that one, you come down here and you have to go like this to get the angle. So, so, uh, so L5 goes to the right, and the entire spine above that goes the other way. So what you're looking at here is L5 goes to the right, and everything up here, this is a compensation for L5, this is a compensation for the compensation, this little hook in here is a compensation for the compensation for the compensation, this little tiny hook here is a compensation for the compensation, it's compensating for the compensation, and you know, so on and so forth. All these little curves are, you know, it's, it's more of a compensation, which is why they get smaller and smaller, because they get more and more unstable as they go up. And then if you look at the sitting, you have the same thing here. When you sit down, you can't compensate as well. 
So now L5 here compared to where it is here, remember this is standing and this is sitting same day, LB2, right? So when she sits and the pelvis decompensates, L5 goes more to the right, all right? But L4 doesn't really change that much. If anything, this goes more to the left. If anything, this goes more to, right? The scoliosis get, oh, let's get the whole thing. So when she can't compensate as well, L5 goes more to the right. See how this is a little bit more to the right than it is over here. Here, the whole thing looks tilted left and L5 looks right compared to what's above it. Here, L5 just plain looks a little bit to the right. But this thing takes off way more to the left. Why does it take off way more to the left? What? Say it loud. Well, because, yeah, can't compensate with the legs, so she's got to compensate more up here, so scoliosis gets bigger. Okay? So when a patient comes in and she's got this scoliosis and everything, one of the first things you do is, you know, you get films and you look at L5. All right? That's going to be almost always your breakdown side. Now, it might be dragged so far over this way, but compared, you know, the, the whole thing might be like this, but L5 compared to L4 is like this. You know, the breakdown side is whichever way it's leaning. All right? And it's a mistake to treat the compensations. So you're not going to be doing much up here. Most of the treatment is going to be down over here. So, I get this young woman who comes in and she gets treated by an ABC practitioner for two to four years and this and that, and, and her scoliosis doesn't get better and does and doesn't get better and does. And she comes to tr get treated by me, and I'm only seeing her once every two weeks. And the first thing I do is I'm checking and I treat her, and she gets a bad result. You know, she doesn't quite breathe as well. She's, oh, eh. So what's that? False positive. False positive. So what do you do? You do some rib lifts, you undo it, and next time you leave it out. So first time I treated her, probably 90% of the things I did were false positives. So you leave out all the false positives, you only treat the positives, and two years later, and I'm treating her once every two weeks, and then my travel schedule, we're missing a bunch, and every once in a while she missed a bunch. So I, you know, I didn't even treat her that many times. And two years later, her dad takes pictures. Her dad's a Cairo, and you know he's got all his guilt things, and he doesn't do ABC. It's a whole weird situation. But the scoliosis is 30 to 40 percent gone. It's like, well, how come when when the other people were treating her, it didn't disappear? And because somebody forgot to teach them about false positives, that would be me, my fault. All right. So that's the issue. Now, if you look at uh, February, which is about, what, four or five months later? Whoops. So if you look at February, now this whole thing is starting to come over to, even L4 is starting to come over to the right. So that's even more of what you see here. All right, and, and in general, the old, the new sitting should look like the old standing. All right, why is that? It's a better, right, they're, they're, you know, if, if you're treating them well, there's a better compensation. So even decompensated sitting, they're going to look more compensated than they were last time. And the more compensated compared to the first one was when they stood compared to when they sat. So the, the new sitting is going to look, tend to look like the old standing. All right, now, when you're treating people with a scoliosis, and you know this is part of the advanced seminar stuff, you know they have a bigger twist. All right, I, I took this one because I just happened to have the X-rays handy when I made up this page. All right, um, Dave Cheatham sends me a thing. Uh, you know, I'm treating this girl with a scoliosis, and they decided to put her in the brace also. And six months later, they take an x-ray, and she's a lot worse. And they're saying she needs a surgery. What do I tell this kid to save her from this? Well, do you have any films? Yeah. Shows me films. And he's got this. I mean, it's classic 
where L5 goes one direction and the entire spine goes another direction. And I said, well, which side did they brace her, you know, pushing her towards? And let's assume it's the same case as this. Well, they pushed her towards her right. You know, they, she had a big curve out here, okay? L5 went to the right and the spine went to the left, so she has this big curve. And they're pushing this curve toward the right. I said, well, of course she got worse because look at where L5 is going. Okay, that's her breakdown side, and they're pushing her into her breakdown side, so she's got to make a big, bigger curve the other way to compensate, so of course the curve got worse. So this is the anatomy of just about every person who, you know, it, it's a very common thing. They put the brace on, and the curve is a lot worse. Well, this is the anatomy of that. The anatomy is they're pushing them toward the breakdown side, and they have to compensate more, so the curve gets worse, and then they do surgery, and what do they do with the surgery? They take away the compensation because this thing's going left and they bring this over towards center. Okay, they take away the compensation. And then, you know, a lot of people, they get this scoliosis surgery and they have to put them on a heart and lung machine and they have to do this and they have to do that da, 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 because they get worse and worse. All right? What was, what was the statistic? 40% of these people are completely disabled within how many years? 13.7. What? Yeah, so 15 years later, these people are completely, you know, they de they, they've taken away their compensation so much that these people can't even exist. They're just wiped out totally. And I have, um, uh, some of you, some of you have been to one where I have a, a it's, it's a great case. They have, um, this woman had a, had a scoliosis and they put in um, a, a metal appliance and it's a very frequent thing at the top of the metal appliance, whatever they have. Okay, there's so much mechanical stress that it collapses the vertebrae and they have a, a compression fracture and all. Well, it's the same thing. All this mechanical stress that was spread out over here, you know, they straighten this out. Now all that mechanical stress is there. And so that collapses, they call it a topping off thing. All right. And so that collapses and then they have to put another one in and then that collapses and, you know, until they die and then, all right, now we don't have to worry about it. Um, well, it's not, it's not hand position, it's body position, body position. all right? So, you know, th this person's got this big twist, big twist, and you're trying to fix, what? Well. Yeah, you're, you're trying to fix this anterior, and you put your hand, you know, you put your hand behind them, and you push, and nothing happens. Well, that's because the vertebra is going this way, and anterior, you know, they're facing this way, but anterior is over there for that particular one. So you put them, you know, fall forward, turn your shoulders toward me, and they turn their shoulders, you know, not their hips, they turn their shoulders, to, and if that happens to be the right direction to line it up, it goes clunk. But when you look, when you look up here, in this area up here, okay, see how there's, this goes back and forth, it goes back and forth about three times, all right? You know, you look at that as one, one curve, you know, going the other way, but if you look closely, this vertebra goes one way, this vertebra goes another way, this vertebra goes back over there, this vertebra goes back over there. So there's like three or four curves in here, and it's twisted. Remember, remember I talk about the way the rubber band twists on itself? And people think, oh, that's some example and analogy. That doesn't really happen. Like heck it doesn't happen. There's your example right there. It's twisted, and then it's twisted on itself, and it's twisted again. You know, people say, well, the rubber band goes in 360 degrees, and the spine doesn't. On a mechanical stress basis, it does. On an absolute physical basis, it doesn't because of the, the way the vertebrae interlock. But on a mechanical stress basis on the inside, that, that mechanical stress is all the way around. All right? Which some people have trouble getting their, their head around that, but it's, you know, it's, it's like you have a building and it looks like 90% of the building is over here and then you have one little piece over here but well, what you don't realize is the piece that's hanging off of this end is solid cement or steel or something like that. And this is an empty building over here. You know, so, so it, 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 the volume of, of building over here can be almost eight times what the volume is over here. But this is solid cement and that's mostly air. So it counterbalances, All right? It, you know, it's, it's like when you lay on a bed all right, how come your butt sinks in? Well, because from here to here, it's mostly water. And from here to here, you're mostly air because you have your lungs. 
and people don't oh so i so so if you know if we cut your trunk up you know this weighs 10 or 15 times as much as this does because this is mostly air and this is water and water weighs a lot more than air all right so same it, it's you know, it, it's not quite what it looks like because of what's going on on the inside. And so these things untwist. <coughs> and so you may have a curve that goes this way, but there might be four or five curves in there. So you can't say the curve goes like this, so you're going to turn your body this way. Because it might be one of those other ones, and you may need to turn the shoulders the other way. So, you know, you put them back against the wall, turn your shoulders toward me, and the patient goes like this. And if that works, fine. If that doesn't work, okay, turn your shoulders away from me. And you turn your shoulders like this, and usually somewhere in there you'll get a click when they get to the right mechanical stress. And then there's always some person who says, how about if you twist the hips? It doesn't work. And, and there's a, a whole mechanical reason. It's the same reason these idiots like Ted Corwin who say, you don't have to do a meninge release like Jesse says. You can get the body into that position and then flex the hips. Well, read Bragg. It doesn't work. And there's a whole set of mechanical reasons you know, if, if the diameter of the, the meninges are twice down here what they are up here, okay, well, the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. So if the diameter is two times here what it is over here, then the amount of meningeal tissue involved is six times, right? 3.14 times two, all right? And that doesn't count the fact that the meningeal tissue is thicker down here than it is up here. And even Bragg, if you, if you bother to read all that stuff in your manual too, he did an experiment where he put forceps on the bottom and pulled like heck on the meninges, and the most he could get the mechanical stress going up the spine was about two centimeters, not even quite an inch, because it's so heavy. So if you think, if, if there's six times as much meningeal tissue there, and the meningeal tissue down here is one and a half to two times as thick as it is up here, so now you got six times one and a half, all right, so all right, so you got nine times. So where you know, think about how hard you're pushing on an anterior meninger release when you're doing this. So to get the, the mechanical stress to go up, you have to have nine times that amount of force. Now, nine times that amount of force is going to break the person before you get the stress anywhere near going up to their spine enough to get a meningeal adhesion release. You know, I don't know how hard you're pushing on an anterior meninger release, but you all know how hard I'm pushing on it. All right, and and the truth is, you know, you get Jeff West or you get Pete, or you get Nick, and you know they they want to get they want to get every meninger release possible to get in one shot, which is like ten times more than you know what they think is possible, and what's actually possible in that one shot is usually not, you know, they're thinking this much is possible, and a lot of times it's only this much, but they're pushing enough to get the whole thing. Now it doesn't hurt the patient as long as you don't change the lineup but you hit the hard stop, you know. How many people do an anterior meninger release, they hit the hard stop and the patient goes flying off the table or flying, you know, sliding on the table? Well, by the time the patient's sliding on the table, you've gone way past the hard stop. All right, so this is how you handle scoliosis and they're actually pretty easy. Now, if the person's got bony change and everything, all right, well, there's gonna be a limit to how far it's gonna untwist because there's a lot of bony change. But if there isn't, they all untwist like this, they're easy, everything else. All right, I'm going to talk three more minutes. All right, when you talk to people about scoliosis, all right, when you talk to people about scoliosis, you never, you, you have to invalidate what the medical people are saying. So when, when you talk to people about scoliosis, and this is a real small one, they all talk about the front view picture and how big the curves are. And you have to say, anybody who looks at the front view picture to you know, look at the curves, they're being silly. All right, you can say they're being stupid. You know, some people can get away with that. It depends on your ARC and everything else. All right, because the big problem with scoliosis that you worry about is what? What? No, 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 no. What? That it gets worse. Well, that it gets worse, but you know, they don't tell you that fifty. Hang on, hang on. They don't tell you that 50% of the people with scoliosis as teenagers spontaneously don't have it in tw when they're in their 20s. That, that's, a, that's a medical statistic that nobody ever tells anybody because they want to do the surgery, right? No, no, the, the, the problem with scoliosis 
is the body's going to collapse and it's going to compress the organs and you're not going to be able to live. You can compress your heart, your lungs, you know. In women, it's going to compress the abdomen and they're not going to be able to have kids and all this stuff. That's what they're worried about, okay? Well, you treat them with ABC the first time, what happens? In the side view, they pop up. 100% of them. Not 99, not 80, not 70, you know. 100% of them pop up. So you have to go, look, I know the doctors told you that this big curve and everything, that doesn't matter. They're worried about organ compression as you get older and it compresses your heart and everything. So if you're worried about that, what you want to look is at the side view. Now, we don't even have to take a side view x-ray. We can take a side view picture. Here, stand, you know, take the kid or whoever it is, stand here, face that way, click. Take this, see how this is forward, this and that, everything else? All right. Now, I'm going to do something. It takes less than a minute, all right, as a demonstration of what I can do. And, you know, you've seen the pictures on my website. Most of you have websites with before and after pictures, how people pop up. Here. And you put them against the wall and you say, breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump, click. See how much straighter, oh my gosh, you're straighter than that. Yeah, so once I start, and this is, and, and you say, and this is nothing. This is one stupid little thing I can do, it takes less than a minute. To get the rest straight takes more, right? But you'll see it noticeably better today. And they're like, today? And you look at them and you go, I make large permanent improvements in people's mechanics immediately. And, you know, people are. And so you treat them, and then you take the next picture, and the body pops up a bunch more, and you go, this is a three-dimensional thing. The body is twisted like this, all right? It's already coming up like this, which is what we're looking at in the side view. Now it's going to start on twisting like this. This front view picture, depending upon the day they take the picture, it may be more curved or less curved as it untwists. You don't care about that. What you care about is a side view. So in six months, if they take an X-ray and they say, oh, the curve is bigger, you're like, big deal. Look at the side view. They're up and they can breathe better and they're not, we're not worried about organ compression. So starting with day one, you don't care what the medical people say because the body's popped up and they're, they're, they're supposed to be worried about compressing the organs and they never even look at the right thing. It's idiotic which is why they don't know what it is, they can't fix it, da, 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 and they don't tell you how badly the surgery affects people. And you should find out where Allie got that thing and you should get a copy of it and show it and everything else. And you know, because you're trying to save this person's life in the long run. And that's what you're looking at. Okay. What's the question? Yeah, hang on. Not what you tell people. Do you have a question? Yeah, is that, can you tell them uh, there's no such thing as idiopathic anymore? What's the most, most famous way of it? Can you tell them well, there's no such thing as idiopathic anymore? Idiopathic means they don't know what it's caused by. Yeah. All right? Well, we know what it's caused by, which is why we fix it on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah that you can tell. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Jesse. Now.